Let's go start this in Matthew, the 21st chapter. The title of the lesson, I guess I should tell you that, right? Because every time I put it together, I get angry all over again, sisters and brothers. Because this was a lesson built out of anger. The title of this lesson, the punishment of Israel is from God and no one else. The punishment from Israel is from God and no one else. What you've done is you got other people in trouble because now they got to pay for what they've done to us. Because the Lord said, I was a little displeased, but you have fathered the affliction. All of a sudden, other people are in trouble because <coughs> you're misbehaving. Now, we're going to start in Matthew 21, Matthew chapter 21. It's because, sisters and brothers, the word has to be taught. You cannot be a minister, a priest of God, and you're going to have a bias or a slanted lesson. You got to teach all the book. If it falls on you, it falls on you. Jeremiah, uh, uh, Matthew 21 and verse 33. We're going to start at verse 33. Matthew, the 21st chapter, and we're going to start reading at verse 33. Okay, go ahead. Hear another parable. Uh-huh. There was a certain household that was planted a vineyard. Uh-huh. And hedged it round about. Go ahead. And dig the wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. Now, it's talking about a certain man planted a vineyard, built a tower in it, gave it everything it needs. Then he led it out to husband man. He's the minister, sister and brother. And he went into a far country. Go ahead and read. And when the time of the fruit drew near, uh -huh. he sent his service to the husband men that they might receive the fruits of it. Now, <clears throat> the time for him to reap the fruit, he sent his servant. See, this thing started from the beginning down to Jesus and beyond, sisters and brothers. Yes, sir. This parable encompasses the whole creation. So he sent his servant first to Reap his portion of the fruit. Go ahead and read. 35. And the husbandman took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Uh-huh. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, they will reverence my son. Now, look. He sent his husbandman, these are the prophets. He sent his servant, rather, the prophets. They come and they beat some prophets. They kill some prophets. They stoned some to death. Yes. Then finally he said, I'm going to send my son. Suddenly they will reverence my son. See, this from the time that Israel fell off the cart, sister and brother, up until Jesus. Now here comes Jesus. Go ahead and read. 38. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they uh -huh. said among themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and let us seize on his inheritance. Now see how these people think? Say, hey, now this is the heir. These are the ministers because the Lord said, hey, your shepherds have caused you to go astray. Yes. Said, so now, let us kill him and seize on his inheritance. So what did they do? Go ahead and read. And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. When the Lord, therefore, of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? Now, so now they caught him. They wouldn't listen to the prophet. They beat and killed some of them. Then he sent his son. They killed him. Mm -hmm. Then the question was asked, what will the Lord do unto these husband men? Go ahead and read. They said unto him, he will miserably destroy those wicked men uh -huh. and will let out his vineyard unto other husband men, which shall rid to him the fruits of their sea in their seasons. He's he going to miserably destroy them. And he's going to rent it out to some ministers or some servants that's going to render him his fruit and his due seat. This is a parable of the vineyard. Let's see who this vineyard is. Let's go to Isaiah the fifth chapter. We're going to get right down to it. Isaiah chapter 5. Because sisters and brothers, the Lord said we have to acknowledge our transgressions and the transgressions of our father. We cannot keep blaming everybody for our situation. Then the Lord calls you to understand, calls a, a, a me to try to enlighten some to let you know what you was chosen for. And I know you didn't know because if you was chosen to be the priest of God and to bring all his children back to him, then you wouldn't be condemning everybody. You wouldn't have this arrogant attitude like you know something. You, we should not be arrogant as a people, sister and brother. We should be ashamed. Because the Lord told us if you obey me, you will be on the top of everything. You'll be the financier. Whatever it is, you're going to run it. And you find out that you 
Israel, and all of a sudden you got an arrogant attitude and you puffed up? It's obvious you don't know what you fell, where you fell from. So the Lord said, he planted a vineyard, and he put a tower in it and everything he needed in it, and he rented it out to some husbandmen, the people that's supposed to teach these people. What do they do? When it's time for the harvest, he sent his prophet. They killed the prophet. Then he sent Jesus. They killed him. Let's look at this vineyard, and let's see how, who this vineyard is. Five and one. Go ahead. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. Uh-huh. My well-beloved has a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. Go ahead. And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof. Uh-huh. And planted it with the choicest vines. Go ahead. And built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein. Now look. So what my well-beloved, because the Lord, Lord loved his people, is he planted a vineyard and he put choice vines in it. And he put the best of everything in it. And what happened? Go ahead and read. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. Now, he didn't put the choices of vine in there. He didn't push the best of everything. This is good law, sisters and brothers. And when he looked for grapes, he, it brought forth wild grapes. That wasn't supposed to be there. No, Go sir. ahead and read. Three. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, uh -huh. judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. Go ahead. What could have been done more to my vineyard than I have not done in it? He said, I want you to judge between me and this vineyard. What could I have done that I didn't do? In other words, I've given you everything you need to work with. What could I have done more? Go ahead and read. Wherefore, when I looked at it, it should bring forth grapes, uh -huh. brought it forth wild grapes. Go ahead. And now go to. I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. He said, when I looked for grapes, it brought it forth wild grapes. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do to this vineyard. Go ahead and read. I will take away the hedge thereof. Now listen now. The Lord said, what I will do. He didn't mention nobody else. No, sir. I will take away the hedges thereof. Go ahead and read. And it shall be eaten up uh -huh. and break down the wall thereof. He's going to break down the walls thereof. Go ahead and read. And it shall be trodden down. Uh -huh. And I will lay it waste. And he said, I'm going to lay it waste. This is the Lord talking, sisters and brothers. This ain't got nothing to do with the Gentiles or Hamites. This is the Lord talking. Teach. Like your Lord can lie. He said he going to do this, didn't he? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. And I will lay it waste. Uh -huh. It shall not be pruned nor digged. Go ahead. But there shall come up briars and thorns. Uh -huh. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. He said I ain't going to even let it rain no rain on this vineyard. Everything that can go bad is going to go bad yes. for this vineyard because I'm going to make sure it go bad. Go ahead and read. Seven. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Is who? The house of Israel. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Go ahead and read. And the men of Judah, his pleasant plant. Uh-huh. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression. Go ahead. For righteousness, but behold, a cry. And he said, that's what I did. I looked for judgment, and all I saw was oppression. Israel oppressed one another. They oppressed everybody else. That he looked right. for righteousness, saw, he saw a cry. This people have been doing wrong for a long time. Yes, sir. And now I hear people use that excuse. Well, you see, we were slaves so long until we got that slave mentality. That is crap. 